In this lecture, we will talk about systems of identical fermions. And in particular, we will discuss these identical fermions in the Wigner formula, formulation of quantum mechanics. Um, the results that you find in these lectures uh, are actually taken from this paper that you see here, uh, the title on the simulation of indistinguishable fermions in the many-body Wigner formalism. This is where you find all the details, all the mathematical details, and all the implementation details for obtaining the results that we will discuss in this lecture. Uh, this is a paper that was uh, recently published on Journal of Computational Physics. So this is where you should go if you want to know all details. Uh, the many-body Wigner equation is this equation that you have on the top of this slide, uh, where you have in particular this VW, which is called the kernel, uh, or the Wigner kernel of the equation. Uh, in particular, you should note that here, this n here is an integer number, which is the number of particles that are involved. In our particular case, the number of fermions which are in, involved in the simulation. Um, you may also notice that these x and this p here are vectors, but they are vectors which express the position and the momenta of all n particles involved in the simulation. So this is a many-body equation, which is called uh, the many-body Wigner equation. And you can also see here a little bit of the mathematical details. Uh, this is not a single integration, but this is an integration over n integrals and n variables, and the same thing happens here. So you may understand this is not an easy problem to solve. But in a previous lecture, we have shown that we have a initio Monte Carlo methods uh, based on the Wigner uh, formulation of quantum mechanics, which can solve this equation in a, in a reliable and efficient way, especially if you, are, if you have a parallel machine at your disposal. Uh, now, just to give, um, to give the tenets of the Monte Carlo method, I report here these slides where if you calculate a macroscopic variable, uh, you can essentially express this macroscopic variable in terms of a Liouville von Neumann series. And if we calculate explicitly, analytically, the first three terms and we sum them, this is the expression that we get here. And what you can see is that this expression is essentially branching, and the way it branch is uh, in this way. You essentially have a term here every time, which is an exponential of this integral, and this exponential of this integral is essentially telling you what's the probability of uh, a virtual particle defined over the phase space to stay in the points which are every time expressed here and here and here. Uh, so it, this is essentially how we construct the Monte Carlo method for the many-body Wigner um, equation. In particular, the interesting thing here is that we have the appearance of this capital gamma here, which is telling you that you have the creation every time of a positive and a negative sign particle. Um, so for the details of this Monte Carlo method, I strongly recommend you to go through the paper that we discussed uh, at the beginning of this lecture. Um, concerning identical fermions in the Wigner formalism, uh, this is the way it works. There is actually nothing extremely complicated. If you are familiar with fermions in the Schrodinger formulation of quantum mechanics, you may already know that a wave function corresponding to a system of identical fermions is an anti-symmetric wave function. This means that if you exchange, for example, uh, two particles uh, in this wave function, what you, obtain, what you obtain is that this is exactly your wave function, but with a minus sign here. Um, the way you usually obtain an uh, anti-symmetric wave function, uh, and here we put the minus sign to say that it's anti-symmetric, uh, it's by means of uh, so-called Slater determinants. 
and the way you do this is essentially by starting from single body web functions so imagine you have a set of n single body web functions that you report in every row of these metrics and then in the, uh, essentially what you do is on the first row uh, you put the x1 on the second row you put the variable x2 and so on until you get to the, to the last row where you have the uh, n uh, variable and essentially you can show that this determinant has the anti-symmetry uh, property so this is an anti-symmetric web function and does this represent physically speaking a system of fermions of identical fermions so once you know how to construct uh, anti-symmetric web function you know how to construct the initial conditions or a quasi-distribution in the Wigner formulation of quantum mechanics and this is essentially the way we do to include or to simulate identical fermions in, in the Wigner Monte Carlo uh, method for the many body problem for the quantum many body problem so if in particular we get to we want to simulate or we focus um, on a system of two identical fermions this is the way it works Supposing that we explicitly define two web functions in the Schrodinger formulation of quantum mechanics. And these ones, for example, are two Gaussian uh, web packets. O of course, this is not a restriction. You may start from something completely different. In this case, we are just uh, reporting these examples to make things explicit. So supposing that you have these two web functions, you reconstruct your initial web function corresponding to a system of two identical fermions by means of this later determinant. And then what you do is you use this C0 here, you plug it in the Wigner while definition of the distribution function, and you have a quasi-distribution function corresponding to the initial conditions of two identical fermions. Then what we do here is we apply the many body Wigner Monte Carlo method to this system and the way we do it is by having in uh, this reduced web uh, in this reduced phase space we have two Gaussian web packets that you may see here they are very spread in space and they are very narrow in the momentum space and what you can actually see from the plot is that these two um, particles here have opposite sign momenta but they have exactly the same energy and what we do is what we try to do is essentially we push this particle on the left uh, towards the, the, the right side and on uh, vice versa we take the right web packet here and we push it on the left side so essentially we are squeezing two electrons in space which have the same energy and as you may know if we do something like this uh, this is at some point uh, experimentally speaking you may be stuck this cannot be uh, happening because of the Pauli exclusion principle which is telling you that if you take two electrons with the same energy and you want to put them in the same position this uh, this is just impossible this is not uh, acceptable in, in, in physics uh, in physical terms and why it's like this because the Pauli exclusion principle is essentially telling you that uh, two electrons cannot be in the same orbital uh, if they have the same spin and this is essentially what we see here um, you see after some time uh, you can still squeeze the two electrons and essentially what's happening here is that these two web packets are rotating in the phase space which is something that you expect eventually here and this is the most interesting feature uh, in this slide is that you have a the formation of a hole here uh, which is also called the Fermi hole or also an exchange correlation hole and this hole here is essentially telling you that you cannot have any probability of finding the two particles in the same position with the same energy this is just prohibited by the Pauli exclusion principle 
and eventually if you go ahead in time then okay the Fermi hole here disappear uh, because the system is evolving and essentially you have, elect you have your two electrons that are changing in energy and are uh, e even getting backward because of the Pauli extrusion principle. So in a sense here what we have shown is that you may uh, be able to simulate a system of identical fermions using the Wigner Monte Carlo method for the many body Wigner uh, equation. And what you obtain in, uh, in practice is that if you use the right initial conditions, then naturally you uh, have the presence of the Pauli exclusion principle. You don't have to force it, it just comes naturally. The only thing you have to do is to choose the correct initial conditions. Uh, this will um, end the, the, this lecture. I thank you very much for your attention.